Paper 109, Relation of Adjusters to Universe Creatures The thought adjusters are the children of the universe career, and indeed the virgin adjusters must gain experience while mortal creatures grow and develop. As the personality of the human child expands for the struggles of evolutionary existence, so does the adjuster wax great in the rehearsals of the next stage of ascending life. As the child acquires adaptive versatility for his adult activities through the social and play life of early childhood, so does the indwelling adjuster achieve skill for the next stage of cosmic life by virtue of the preliminary mortal planning and rehearsing of those activities which have to do with the Marantia career. Human existence constitutes a period of practice which is effectively utilized by the adjuster in preparing for the increased responsibilities and the greater opportunities of a future life. But the adjuster's efforts, while living within you, are not so much concerned with the affairs of temporal life and planetary existence. Today the thought adjusters are, as it were, rehearsing the realities of the universe career in the evolving minds of human beings. One, development of adjusters. There must be a comprehensive and elaborate plan for the training and development of virgin adjusters before they are sent forth from Divinnington, but we really do not know very much about it. There undoubtedly also exists an extensive system for retraining adjusters of indwelling experience before they embark upon new missions of mortal association, but again, we do not actually know. I have been told by personalized adjusters that every time a monitor and dwelt mortal fails of survival, when the adjuster returns to Divinnington, an extended course of training is engaged in. This additional training is made possible by the experience of having indwelt a human being, and it is always imparted before the adjuster is remanded to the evolutionary worlds of time. Actual living experience has no cosmic substitute. The perfection of the divinity of a newly formed thought adjuster does not in any manner endow this mystery monitor with experienced ministrative ability. Experience is inseparable from a living existence. It is the one thing which no amount of divine endowment can absolve you from the necessity of securing by actual living. Therefore, in common with all beings living and functioning within the present sphere of the Supreme, thought adjusters must acquire experience. They must evolve from the lower, inexperienced, to the higher, more experienced groups. Adjusters pass through a definite developmental career in the mortal mind. They achieve a reality of attainment which is eternally theirs. They progressively acquire adjuster skill and ability as a result of any and all contacts with the material races, regardless of the survival or non-survival of their particular mortal subjects. They are also equal partners of the human mind in fostering the evolution of the immortal soul of survival capacity. The first stage of adjuster evolution is attained in fusion with the surviving soul of a mortal being. Thus, while you are in nature evolving inward and upward from man to God, the adjusters are in nature evolving outward and downward from God to man. And so will the final product of this union of divinity and humanity eternally be the Son of Man and the Son of God. Two Self-Acting Adjusters You have been informed of the classification of adjusters in relation to experience, virgin, advanced, and supreme. You should also recognize a certain functional classification, the self-acting adjusters. A self-acting adjuster is one who... 1. 1. Has had certain requisite experience in the evolving life of a will creature either as a temporary indweller on a type of world where adjusters are only loaned to mortal subjects, or on an actual fusion planet where the human failed of survival. Such a monitor is either an advanced or a supreme adjuster. 2. Has acquired the balance of spiritual power in a human who has made the third psychic circle and has had assigned to him a personal seraphic guardian. 3 has a subject who has made the supreme decision, has entered into a solemn and sincere betrothal with the adjuster. The adjuster looks beforehand to the time of actual fusion and reckons the union as an event of fact. 4. 
has a subject who has been mustered into one of the reserve corps of destiny on an evolutionary world of mortal ascension. 5. At some time, during human sleep, has been temporarily detached from the mind of mortal incarceration to perform some exploit of liaison, contact, re-registration, or other extra-human service associated with the spiritual administration of the world of assignment. 6. Has served in a time of crisis in the experience of some human being who is the material complement of a spirit personality entrusted with the enactment of some cosmic achievement essential to the spiritual economy of the planet. Self-acting adjusters seem to possess a marked degree of will in all matters not involving the human personalities of their immediate indwelling, as is indicated by their numerous exploits both within and without the mortal subjects of attachment. Such adjusters participate in numerous activities of the realm, but more frequently they function as undetected indwellers of the earthly tabernacles of their own choosing. Undoubtedly, these higher and more experienced types of adjusters can communicate with those in other realms. But while self-acting adjusters do thus intercommunicate, they do so only on the levels of their mutual work and for the purpose of preserving custodial data essential to the adjuster ministry of the realms of their sojourn, though on occasions they have been known to function in interplanetary matters during times of crisis. Supreme and self-acting adjusters can leave the human body at will. The indwellers are not an organic or biologic part of mortal life. They are divine superimpositions thereon. In the original life plans they were provided for, but they are not indispensable to material existence. Nevertheless, it should be recorded that they very rarely, even temporarily, leave their mortal tabernacles after they once take up their indwelling. The superacting adjusters are those who have achieved the conquest of their entrusted tasks and only await the dissolution of the material life vehicle for the translation of the immortal soul. Three, relation of adjusters to mortal types. The character of the detailed work of mystery monitors varies in accordance with the nature of their assignments as to whether or not they are liaison or fusion adjusters. Some adjusters are merely loaned for the temporal lifetimes of their subjects. Others are bestowed as personality candidates with permission for everlasting fusion if their subjects survive. There is also a slight variation in their work among the different planetary types, as well as in differing systems and universes. But, on the whole, their labors are remarkably uniform, more so than are the duties of any of the created orders of celestial beings. On certain primitive worlds, the Series I group, the adjuster indwells the mind of the creature as an experiential training, chiefly for self-culture and progressive development. Virgin adjusters are usually sent to such worlds during the earlier times when primitive men are arriving in the Valley of Decision, but when comparatively few will elect to ascend the moral heights beyond the hills of self-mastery and character requirement to attain the higher levels of emerging spirituality. Many, however, who fail of adjuster fusion do survive as spirit-fused ascenders. The adjusters receive valuable training and acquire wonderful experience in transient association with primitive minds, and they are able subsequently to utilize this experience for the benefit of superior beings on other worlds. Nothing of survival value is ever lost in all the wide universe. On another type of world, the Series II group, the adjusters are merely loaned to mortal beings. Here the monitors can never attain fusion personality through such indwelling, but they do afford great help to their human subjects during the mortal lifetime, far more than they are able to give to Urantia mortals. The adjusters are here loaned to the mortal creatures for a single life span as patterns for their higher spiritual attainment, temporary helpers in the intriguing task of perfecting a survival character. The adjusters do not return after natural death. These surviving mortals attain eternal life through spirit fusion. On such worlds as Urantia, the Series Three group, there is a real betrothal with the divine gifts, a life and death engagement. If you survive, there is to be an eternal union, an everlasting fusion, the making of man and adjuster, one being. 
In the three-brained mortals of this series of worlds, the adjusters are able to gain far more actual contact with their subjects during the temporal life than in the one- and two-brained types. But in the career after death, the three-brained type proceed just as do the one-brained type and the two-brained peoples, the Urantia races. On the two brain worlds, subsequent to the sojourn of a paradise bestowal son, virgin adjusters are seldom assigned to persons who have unquestioned capacity for survival. It is our belief that on such worlds practically all adjusters in dwelling intelligent men and women of survival capacity belong to the advanced or to the supreme type. In many of the early evolutionary races of Urantia, three groups of beings existed. There were those who were so animalistic that they were utterly lacking in adjuster capacity. There were those who exhibited undoubted capacity for adjusters, and promptly received them when the age of moral responsibility was attained. There was a third class, who occupied a borderline position. They had capacity for adjuster reception, but the monitors could only indwell the mind on the personal petition of the individual. But with those beings who are virtually disqualified for survival by disinheritance through the agency of unfit and inferior ancestors, many a virgin adjuster has served a valuable preliminary experience in contacting evolutionary mind, and thus has become better qualified for a subsequent assignment to a higher type of mind on some other world. Four, Adjusters and Human Personality the higher forms of intelligent intercommunication between human beings are greatly helped by the indwelling adjusters. Animals do have fellow feelings, but they do not communicate concepts to each other. They can express emotions, but not ideas and ideals. Neither do men of animal origin experience a high type of intellectual intercourse or spiritual communion with their fellows until the thought adjusters have been bestowed, albeit, when such evolutionary creatures develop speech, they are on the high road to receiving adjusters. Animals do, in a crude way, communicate with each other, but there is little or no personality in such primitive contact. Adjusters are not personality, they are pre-personal beings, but they do hail from the source of personality, and their presence does augment the qualitative manifestations of human personality. Especially is this true if the adjuster has had previous experience. The type of adjuster has much to do with the potential for expression of the human personality. On down through the ages, many of the great intellectual and spiritual leaders of Urantia have exerted their influence chiefly because of the superiority and previous experience of their indwelling adjusters. The indwelling adjusters have in no small measure cooperated with other spiritual influences in transforming and humanizing the descendants of the primitive men of olden ages. If the adjusters indwelling the minds of the inhabitants of Urantia were to be withdrawn, the world would slowly return to many of the scenes and practices of the men of primitive times. The divine monitors are one of the real potentials of advancing civilization. I have observed a thought adjuster in dwelling a mind on Urantia, who has, according to the records on Uversa, indwelt fifteen minds previously in Orvantan. We do not know whether this monitor has had similar experiences in other super-universes, but I suspect so. This is a marvelous adjuster, and one of the most useful and potent forces on Urantia during this present age. What others have lost, in that they refuse to survive, this human being, and your whole world, now gains. From him who has not survival qualities shall be taken away even that experienced adjuster which he now has, while to him who has survival prospects shall be given even the pre-experienced adjuster of a slothful deserter. In a sense, the adjusters may be fostering a certain degree of planetary cross-fertilization in the domains of truth, beauty, and goodness, but they are seldom given two indwelling experiences on the same planet. There is no adjuster now serving on Urantia who has been on this world previously. I know whereof I speak, since we have their numbers and records in the archives of Uversa. Five material handicaps to adjuster and dwelling. 
Supreme and self-acting adjusters are often able to contribute factors of spiritual import to the human mind when it flows freely in the liberated but controlled channels of creative imagination. At such times and sometimes during sleep, the adjuster is able to arrest the mental currents, to stay the flow, and then to divert the idea procession, and all this is done in order to effect deep spiritual transformations in the higher recesses of the superconsciousness. Thus are the forces and energies of mind more fully adjusted to the key of the contactual tones of the spiritual level of the present and the future. It is sometimes possible to have the mind illuminated to hear the divine voice that continually speaks within you, so that you may become partially conscious of the wisdom, truth, goodness, and beauty of the potential personality constantly indwelling you. But your unsteady and rapidly shifting mental attitudes often result in thwarting the plans and interrupting the work of the adjusters. Their work is not only interfered with by the innate natures of the mortal races, but this ministry is also greatly retarded by your own preconceived opinions, settled ideas, and long-standing prejudices. Because of these handicaps, many times only their unfinished creations emerge into consciousness, and confusion of concept is inevitable. Therefore, in scrutinizing mental situations, safety lies only in the prompt recognition of each and every thought and experience for just what it actually and fundamentally is, disregarding entirely what it might have been. The great problem of life is the adjustment of the ancestral tendencies of living to the demands of the spiritual urges initiated by the divine presence of the mystery monitor. While in the universe and super-universe careers no man can serve two masters, in the life you now live on your rancha, every man must perforce serve two masters. He must become adept in the art of a continuous human temporal compromise while he yields spiritual allegiance to but one master. And this is why so many falter and fail, grow weary, and succumb to the stress of the evolutionary struggle. While the hereditary legacy of cerebral endowment and that of electrochemical overcontrol both operate to delimit the sphere of efficient adjuster activity, no hereditary handicap, in normal minds, ever prevents eventual spiritual achievement. Heredity may interfere with the rate of personality conquest, but it does not prevent eventual consummation of the ascendant adventure. If you will cooperate with your adjuster, the divine gift will, sooner or later, evolve the immortal Marantia soul, and subsequent to fusion therewith, will present the new creature to the sovereign master son of the local universe, and eventually to the father of adjusters on paradise. Six. The Persistence of True Values Adjusters never fail. Nothing worth surviving is ever lost. Every meaningful value in every will creature is certain of survival, irrespective of the survival or non-survival of the meaning-discovering or evaluating personality. And so it is, a mortal creature may reject survival. Still, the life experience is not wasted. The eternal adjuster carries the worthwhile features of such an apparent life of failure over into some other world, and there bestows these surviving meanings and values upon some higher type of mortal mind, one of survival capacity. No worthwhile experience ever happens in vain, no true meaning or real value ever perishes. As related to fusion candidates, if a mystery monitor is deserted by the mortal associate, if the human partner declines to pursue the ascending career, when released by natural death, or prior thereto, the adjuster carries away everything of survival value which has evolved in the mind of that non-surviving creature. If an adjuster should repeatedly fail to attain fusion personality because of the non-survival of successive human subjects, and if this monitor should subsequently be personalized, all the acquired experience of having indwelt and mastered all these mortal minds would become the actual possession of such a newly personalized adjuster an endowment to be enjoyed and utilized throughout all future ages. A personalized adjuster of this order is a composite assembly of all the survival traits of all his former creature hosts. When adjusters of long universe experience volunteer to indwell divine sons on bestowal missions, 
they full well know that personality attainment can never be achieved through this service. But often does the Father of Spirits grant personality to these volunteers and establish them as directors of their kind. These are the personalities honored with authority on Divinnington, and their unique natures embody the mosaic humanity of their multiple experiences of mortal indwelling, and also the spirit transcript of the human divinity of the Paradise Bestowal Son of the terminal indwelling experience. The activities of adjusters in your local universe are directed by the personalized adjuster of Michael of Salvington, that very monitor who guided him step by step when he lived his human life in the flesh of Joshua ben Joseph. Faithful to his trust was this extraordinary adjuster, and wisely did this valiant monitor direct the human nature, ever guiding the mortal mind of the Paradise Son in the choosing of the path of the Father's perfect will. This adjuster had previously served with Machavent to Melchizedek in the days of Abraham, and had engaged in tremendous exploits both previous to this indwelling and between these bestowal experiences. This adjuster did indeed triumph in Jesus' human mind, that mind which in each of life's recurring situations maintained a consecrated dedication to the Father's will, saying, Not my will, but yours be done. Such decisive consecration constitutes the true passport from the limitations of human nature to the finality of divine attainment. This same adjuster now reflects in the inscrutable nature of his mighty personality the pre-baptismal humanity of Joshua ben Joseph, the eternal and living transcript of the eternal and living values which the greatest of all Urantians created out of the humble circumstances of a commonplace life as it was lived to the complete exhaustion of the spiritual values attainable in mortal experience. Everything of permanent value which is entrusted to an adjuster is assured eternal survival. In certain instances, the monitor holds these possessions for bestowal on a mortal mind of future indwelling. In others, and upon personalization, these surviving and conserved realities are held in trust for future utilization in the service of the architects of the Master Universe. Seven, Destiny of Personalized Adjusters We cannot state whether or not non-adjuster father fragments are personalizable, but you have been informed that personality is the sovereign free will bestowal of the Universal Father. As far as we know, the adjuster type of father fragment attains personality only by the acquirement of personal attributes through service ministry to a personal being. These personalized adjusters are at home on Divinnington, where they instruct and direct their pre-personal associates. Personalized thought adjusters are the untrammeled, unassigned, and sovereign stabilizers and compensators of the far-flung universe of universes. They combine the creator and creature experience, existential and experiential. They are conjoint time and eternity beings. They associate the pre-personal and the personal in universe administration. Personalized adjusters are the all-wise and powerful executives of the architects of the Master Universe. They are the personal agents of the full ministry of the Universal Father, personal, pre-personal, and superpersonal. They are the personal ministers of the extraordinary, the unusual, and the unexpected throughout all the realms of the transcendental absonite spheres of the domain of God the Ultimate, even to the levels of God the Absolute. They are the exclusive beings of the universes who embrace within their being all the known relationships of personality. They are omnipersonal. They are before personality, they are personality, and they are after personality. They minister the personality of the Universal Father as in the eternal past, the eternal present, and the eternal future. Existential personality on the order of the infinite and absolute the Father bestowed upon the eternal Son. But he chose to reserve for his own ministry the experiential personality of the type of the personalized adjuster bestowed upon the existential pre-personal adjuster and they are thus both destined to the future eternal superpersonality of the transcendental ministry of the absinite realms of the ultimate, the supreme ultimate, even to the levels of the ultimate absolute. 
Seldom are the personalized adjusters seen at large in the universes. Occasionally they consult with the Ancients of Days, and sometimes the personalized adjusters of the Sevenfold Creator Sons come to the headquarters worlds of the constellations to confer with the Veranda Deck rulers. When the planetary Veranda Deck observer of Urantia, the Most High Custodian, who not long since assumed an emergency regency of your world, asserted his authority in the presence of the resident Governor-General, he began his emergency administration of Urantia with a full staff of his own choosing. He immediately assigned to all his associates and assistants their planetary duties, but he did not choose the three personalized adjusters who appeared in his presence the instant he assumed the regency. He did not even know they would thus appear, for they did not so manifest their divine presence at the time of a previous regency. And the Most High Regent did not assign service or designate duties for these volunteer personalized adjusters. Nevertheless, these three omnipersonal beings were among the most active of the numerous orders of celestial beings then serving on Urantia. Personalized adjusters perform a wide range of services for numerous orders of universe personalities, but we are not permitted to discuss these ministries with adjuster indwelt evolutionary creatures. These extraordinary human divinities are among the most remarkable personalities of the entire grand universe, and no one dares to predict what their future missions may be. Presented by a Solitary Messenger of Orvantan